Well, no, they're not groupies like that. You know, listen, when, when they're Latinas, I had more people that wanted to feed me than fuck me. Can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez. Porque sabe que let's do the show. Porque I got a lot thing I got to go to that dry cleaner here by Kim Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza. I got to go get some Neo Spore and Paul. You know George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. Where do you play ball or... You know, did you play in college? Did you did, did you get letters? Did you play in Italy? And maybe he didn't. But when somebody's that tall, you don't see people that tall yeah. every day. Yeah. And your just assumption is this dude, you know, plays Let's ball. Play ball yeah. Well, I think too, if like if you're seven feet tall, it's like ten percent of the seven footers in the world just are in the NBA. Like <laughs> the odds are that good. <laughs> yeah. And how bad that did, did our. Well, it's not, it's not about basketball, but how bad did our taller seven foot community w was when somebody from Europe was considered no good? Like they would say, "Man, we got some dude from Croatia playing." Oh, fuck that! That dude can't play. <laughs> no, he's good, man. Oh, yeah. And and they're good. Like they don't miss. And they you know, know, there was some, the guy that got unfortunately was in, in the car accident and. Uh, Hey, do like do hey do like they do, do like they do and hey do like he does to the kid lock his ass out. Hey, who decided to show up? Hey, be here at the right time or don't be here at all. Tell him, come on. Just for that, you have to drink three beers today. I go. I'm Liza. Liza is. Oh, she'll understand this one. A maven. She's a maven of. The world that you have just entered. El the world mundo. Of, of people that are fucking tardy. No. <laughs> the world of people that, uh, I don't feel tardy. Okay, we said, <laughs> though, you had to have, like, an amazing reason. Because being that you were haircut, with the badge, yeah. I know that being on time, that's like, that goes one it, and one. It always is. Today. Something in, happened. In, 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 in. Oh, you at the VFW. No. The Oompa no, 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 no. no, no. I was at the Rio Del Rey at 140. As a matter of fact, we at the... <laughs> No, no you, I said no. you. <laughs> I was uh, in the neighborhood, they would say, just a pendejada, you know? I'll I've been up since it. 7 o'clock yeah. drinking coffee out of my front patio. Me, my iPad, my dog, my phone, and then... My and, fucking uh, lotion, my CBD lotion. All of, a sudden, all of a sudden, I get phone calls about, from the Netflix people. I get phone calls from a partner of mine whose nephew died, got murdered last oh. night. Oh, okay. I had all kinds of calls coming. I just kept going and going and going. Every time I'd get up, another phone call. And I realized, and for some reason, it's a pendejada, because I could have just said, stop, no more. I'm going to turn the phone off. But I could have swore. That just kicked my ass. I thought the show started at 2.30. And not until I realized... When I got your message, you know, you're running a little late. You know, it's really kind of hard to be mad at somebody who's, who, who's playing mind games already. Yeah, you know? Know <laughs> and so I just, I, I mean, said, this, this, guy, this, this is no good. This ain't right. You know, I'm a dependable guy. You know, I, I live I by my wife. I said, though, I'm like, I, I bet know. you he's going to have, like, an know. amazing I'm saying, reason. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just glad I'm here. Salud, and it is a pleasure to meet you. Me. Well, listen. Salud. Cheers with the coffee. L listen. I mean, I still am a, have a larger lure that you're on the show. Pero, since I've been around you now like 10 weeks, I'm trying to poke holes in that whole story while you're talking. I'm thinking, mm. is that true? Is, that true? <laughs> is he saying this? Hey, listen, I'm the last person to be late. And I was like, is that right? Or is he <laughs> no, 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 am I the first person? Is there sometimes, does he ghost people? Or, you know, no, that's, that's a new one. You know what that one means, ghost? Ghosting, yeah. Uh, no, no, that's where. That's I'll be the millennial media. translator. Yes. Yeah, dude, so ghosting sorry. means where you're totally in contact with someone and then wakatela, like overnight you're Casper and you just ghost. Like you don't talk to them, you don't return their texts anymore, you leave them on red. Wakatela. <laughs> no, she's also. Now you're, now you're, you're talking my language. Pero mira, yeah. Yeah. And no, sauce no, no. too. Hey, watch out. Watch out. Watch out. And then what happened? Fuck in my head. Hey. What happened? Do open the door. Palo. Palo. Hey. And the other guy came by sauce in my car. I'm like, chingas, madre. Well, I. I I just gotta hurry up. Well, welcome, welcome. Thank you. I Sorry gotta hurry to hear up about all those take two. I know. Two, two, two more we steps. We got plenty so more beers where that came yeah. from. But, but the reason, yeah, that's also um, 
Should you introduce yourself? I don't, I'm not good at it. Yeah, sure. So, hey, everyone. I'm Liza Monet Morales. I'm an actor, a television host, and a content creator, and a proud Latina. More than that, specifically, I'm a sixth generation Angelino. So, I bow down to Gil. Uh, we got oh. stories we can talk about. Oh, no, we are going to talk about it. Theo George as well. And super pumped because we just celebrated the drop of his NFT on Friday of Cha Cha Lucha. So, if you definitely want to, uh, you know, pick one up, you can head over to nft.chachalucha. Okay, I know there's people that don't understand do you know what an nft is no yeah. i was gonna say Did I? I right. like real close to you right now mm -hmm. you're starting know, with ghosting and we're moving up yeah see look at it's an like mf vocabulary. okay an mft is masa for tamales but <laughs> 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 and it's, they're so close but they're so different so an nft is a non-fungible token and we're going to still break that down further. Let's now, go Snoop further. Dogg, when we were talking with him, he was like... We both went quiet. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Snoop Dogg was like, NFT, I think, stands more for, like, never forget to pass. I was like, okay, bet. <laughs> uh, so, essentially, an NFT, you can turn anything into an NFT. It starts as, like, let's say, a digital painting, right? And then from there, you can add to it what they call unlockables. So, you can unlock a Zoom call, let's say, with George, or to come play at his golf tournament you know, which benefits his foundation, which is actually one of the things that we're doing. If you had the Via shoe, mm -hmm. let's say, or a drawing of the shoe, um, you could actually do that as an NFT because we know how important that shoe is. I mean, Gil, for the people at home that just don't know, I, I love when you do this drop. How many shoes were there and how many came to California? 1,356 on January 9, 1980. Yes, he still knows <laughs> the true. name. This is what I'm oh saying. And so if you had like a sketch or that or like a clipping, let's say, you could actually make that as an NFT, you would print it, you know, mint it on the blockchain. So the blockchain is just think of out in the world, right? On the digital sea, if you will, the open sea. Uh, and then one person will have the name as the owner. Now, this is where it gets you complicated. Any more candy shit. But that you see? This is where it gets <laughs> you complicated. Know, you need yeah. to process this. <laughs> I don't believe you. Hey, but oh, here's the thing at the end of the day, a big shout out also to Fawocious, uh, 18 years old uh, from El Salvador, uh, Salvadoran American, literally broke the internet on Christie's two weeks ago uh, with uh, Fawocious sale that they did uh, over $750,000 that they made on paintings from Ferocious is uh, teen years, and it was awesome because he combined digital art, but then for each one of them, he did one for his 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th year. Uh, he actually made cases for people and hand painted them and then included his diary notes from those times. And so it's like art on another level. That's super cool. Yeah. Art with the, with the, with the backstory? Yeah, art with the backstory, Mira how you can simplify it. Tell them about yours with Cha Cha Lucha and how that came to be. So mine is, uh, there's a guy named Randy uh, Levy and Black Pearl came to me because he has a sister that's in my foundation and they lost a sister when they were younger to kidney disease and then the idea of kidney disease was important to them and then she came with her husband Larry and helped us when, like I couldn't keep the doors open, you know, of the foundation and they always stepped up they're part of the Coles family but you know uh, I didn't rely on them but they, they helped and we created this with this guy Ali Sabet who's an incredible NFT maybe one number on the top yeah. NFT artist and we did these these um, uh, luchadores and yes Lucha you scroll Libre. Lucha Libre our own mass with background and with a uh, the NFT and a hoodie and a one of a kind mask when you buy the NFT and we're just getting started and really I don't think the Latino community is real up on it do you think yeah not yet uh so, be yeah. real just did his also with cypress hill which was awesome we launched it on clubhouse launched yours on clubhouse yeah. we had over sixteen thousand people inside the latinx town hall uh -huh. come through to be there uh and to support it yeah yeah, yeah yeah and so there's 50 uh the first round was creating 50 one of ones right now there's currently only 20 left i got you one uh yeah i'm proud of the one i got i'm super excited yeah. i got el puro party mari <laughs> uh but the cool thing i um, mean this is the part that you're forgetting so ali actually uh, you know, made them, and you can see there's the touches of the mm -hmm. lucha libre from our, our <laughs> culture. But George infused each one of them with the personality. 
So I really love how they all have strengths, they have weaknesses and stuff. He, when we asked him, uh, he said that he was el romántico. So do you remember what the strengths and weaknesses are for, for them? He's got no weaknesses. He's there, remember. He reminds me he's El Chingo. I, I did, we, That's what I said. I don't have any Chingo. Uh, um, but they're not supposed to be him, right? They're supposed to have their own identity. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can't remember. That he didn't... Well, I don't know. You, you told me the strength is not memory. memory. The, stra <laughs> the strength was he, you know, he, everything rolls off his back only because he can't remember it. <laughs> you, told me, you, you just mentioned something. You told me to ask my son. I said, when I see my son later on, I'll ask him to Clubhouse. Okay. Yeah, I don't even know what Clubhouse Aside is. from all that, we're going to get Gil on Clubhouse yes. right now. Mira. Right now. So, so El Romantico with the Ray Romance. He likes winning, he hates losing. His personality, his, his uh, weakness is cakes. <laughs> Got joy. And his superpower <laughs> is uh, crushing hugs power. Like, he can crush you with a hug. And uh, I couldn't hug people when I was growing up. I didn't know how. I don't know if you ever knew. Anybody would know how or not to know how. But when you don't get hugged, you don't know what to do. Like, you're trying to... What are they trying to do? Take yeah. him back into the <laughs> nest? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, where, are you, where are you taking them? They're bro? hugging you. Like, grab them! You know, so... so it's always been uh, uh, a, a, a thing with me that... that uh, and listen, man, the, you know, me and the Green River Killer have the same traits. <laughs> his, mom, his mom used to give him a bath and, his, and her robe would open. And uh, gotcha, man. I'm, not, I'm, I'm really not supposed to be even in this studio. I'm supposed to be out there somewhere <laughs> on Lancashire <laughs> by the old Palomino Club. <laughs> but that's trying interesting. Trying to make people disappear. That you're saying that you weren't hugged. I mean, obviously, that's hugging is such a big part of like the Latino community. So at what point do you feel like you crossed there over no when you became I, I a not. dad, you think? Cause I'm sure you hug my end. You know, I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, you know, I can't say. Hmm. I will just say yeah. that I will just say that this business allows you to have a lot of personal personality flaws, but still be effective at your job. Yeah. Well because said. it's a solitary existence. You can travel by yourself. Take a road manager. You got an opening guy. You're supposed to work from this time to this time. You got security guys. Everybody distant. Pick the game where you can play by yourself. Golf. And stand up. You could. You need an audience oh, where you yeah. sell tickets, and then, you know, trying to play the guitar in the house with, you know, solito. So you know, it's not. It's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, it. it it's not healthy, but you know, sometimes. Well, the pandemic definitely encouraged a lot of people to not, you know, be hugging either. I'm a hugger. My, my yeah, dad, me too. My dad oh, yeah. never was, you know, and all I ever wanted to do was impress my dad. I wanted to win him. I wanted to be proud of him. My mom, you know, I was a consentido. I was number, Hi. I was out of seven kids. I was the only boy, so I had six sisters. But I was, I was mama's. You know, I was number five in the, in the rotation. So it was I, I, mijo, que quieres comer? As if I needed more food, and <laughs> and she would, uh, she was always there. When I became a dad, and my kids, I don't care how drunk I was. I don't care how long mm -hmm. I had been away, uh, and I don't care if they were asleep. I said, I love you. Every day. Oh, I love that you did I that. I love them. And every chance I got, I hug them. And my grandkids now, they're little, the, the little ones, they come up and they come up and they give me that, you know, they're not used to hugging them. They, one of them gives me the shoulder. Mm -hmm. I said, no, madre cabrón, come here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me a an anaconda squeeze. That's, beautiful. Yeah. That's from Nacho well, Libre. Give me a, a <laughs> give me an anaconda squeeze. So we're, we're huggers, and everybody is. In the and, and if you and if your dad was, and how did how did you get it? Like, did you know you didn't want to be that? You you learn by your mistakes, or you learn by what what the past. And the past was, I knew the empty feeling I had. Mm -hmm. I didn't want my kids to have that feeling. I wanted to make sure that they knew I was proud of them. If they shit in the toilet. I was proud of them because they made it there. Yeah. And so it, it didn't matter. I, I want to know that their dad loves them and their dad was proud of them. What about riding in the car with your dad is, and you guys were alone? I Anything we, better than that? No, we didn't, we, we didn't do it. He you was a hardworking man. He worked uh, five, six days a week. He had a company pickup truck. On Saturdays, he'd get up. He'd go do the shopping for, for the family. He'd go buy, instead of a can of tomato sauce, he'd buy two cases because it was on sale. Right. He'd plot out. Get the market and say, yeah. okay, this is on sale over here. This and he had a, a pantry in the garage so he could put all the extra food in there. That took up his day. Saturday, by the time he came home, I better have had the grass cut or whatever I was supposed to do. And he wouldn't tell me to do it. He would just uh, maybe the grass needs some cutting. Oh, oh, uh, that the, passive aggressiveness yeah. con the pelo van. Oh yeah. my God. And so that's the way it was. We never. I got to go to Dodger baseball games with him. 
Aww. which was awesome. Yes. E- even though we, we parked all the way at the bottom where the old uh, naval station is now, it's a fire <laughs> oh, something. And then we'd walk That's all the way up to the top. Fucking up, four mile. Up, yeah. All the way up to the top to the nose. That was mm. great. I was with my dad. It was Dodger baseball. It was the best. I wish he'd have been around long enough when I had season tickets for now, no, Dad, right. we ain't walking that shit no more. You're like, <laughs> yeah. I'll drop you off and you can walk up if you want, but we're going to sit in the good seats down here. Aww. So it would... It was good. I love that you brought that up, though, about uh, doing breaking the cycle because it wasn't done for you. Because I know George um, had talked about, we did an interview with him last week about how, you know, he didn't hear his grandmother say, I love you, right? And it reminded me so much of a time with my mom, too, the same thing, that that whole generation of, like, our grandparents, they weren't raised with anybody saying it to them. And so, like, they didn't know any better. And I remember my mom said she was probably in high school when she finally told my grandmother, like, Oye, ama, pero usted por qué no me dice que me quiere? And my grandma's like, what do you mean? Los hechos hablan. Like, I'm showing you, yeah. right? Like, I'm making food for you. I put you in private school, all these things. Mm. That's me telling you that I love you. And my mom's like, no, I need to hear you say you love me. And it was interesting because it really cracked my grandmother, and it took her some time. And it wasn't until I was born that then they started seeing it. And, my, um, you know, my grandmother would see my mom do it and me do it to my mom. And so she started doing it. And I remember her being like in the back and she would start reading these books, uh, spiritual books all of a sudden, right? And she would say, I love you. And I would hear her now telling like my aunts and stuff. But it was because no one did it for her that she didn't even know that there was a cycle to break. Okay, I wanna say to people that are watching or anybody that has has people around them or knows people that usually they're maybe a little bit older now who would still be if you have somebody that, that says, you know, that doesn't say, they love you and like what Liza says like it cracked her because I know that I can st- I can remember one instance when you know I was going to therapy and the, the therapist said hey you know what does your grandma do she watches TV all the time well she's using it as a like a deflection mm, to yeah. kind of hear you but not hear you turn the TV off and then don't ask her you're going to turn the TV just turn it off I go over there turn the TV off and she goes what are you doing what's going on and I said I need to ask you something and I said, do you love me? And immediately she goes, who, who told you to tell me that? Anne? Because Anne's always talking. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said, no, no, no. <laughs> not Anne. I'm telling you, do you love me? And she gets his face and she turns her head. And I said, I said, you got to, you got to, you got to tell me or what the, what the, you know? And then she says, I have to, you're my grandson. Ooh. Oh. But I know that if I would have made her say oh, it. I think it would have cracked her, but she did not have an easy life. But that's her life. That's not my life. Mm-hmm. But at some point, do we just have to get over it? Is it something that you let the past go? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Liza, I don't know Is if you heard easy? about my dad, what, what I said about my dad. My dad had never said, I love you. I had never told my dad, I love you. Mm. Night before he passes, people in his hospital, people in the room, he, oh, he yeah, knows oh, he's, oh. he's dying. And I told her, leave the room. Oh. I've talked to my dad. So I went up and I grabbed his hand. I said, Dad, I've never said this before, but I got to tell you, I love you. I love you, Dad. He said, Mijo, yeah. me too. Didn't say I love you, just said, me too. I knew he loved me. I knew it was there. It would have been beautiful to hear. So he passes in the morning. I'm telling my sister the next day. I said, you know, what? My, my dad never said he loved me. I just wish I'd have heard him say it one time. And she said, you know he loved you. And I said, yeah, I know he did, but I just, one of those things. She came back about a half hour later. She found my dad. They were going through my dad's stuff, and they found a metal can because my dad, <laughs> he's a Mexican. He had his little file box in his, in his uh, closet. $10,000 cash, mm. deed to the house, all the insurance papers, funeral arrangements, everything's there, all wrapped up. She said, you think your dad didn't love you? In a newspaper article about <laughs> me when I was trying to raise some help to start an orphanage in Vietnam. Mm. The most important papers of his life you were part of, he loved you. and. 
It was Los true. Los dichos hablan. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, can we toast to your dad? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's just been like three minutes and I've almost cried <laughs> twice. I'm You're the one crying. I'm wiping <laughs> my eyes. I'm taking the beer away. <laughs> that's be a, a counter that's a Latino for how many times yeah, I get is. And you know what? And that's why, that's why uh. the first time that I talked to Gil, thought he didn't know me, I didn't know him. And when I hung up, I, I was like, and this is rare, like, I feel like I've known this guy my whole life. And I mean, that's, it's not vulnerable. You're not vulnerable. You're just, you're somebody's real. Like, yeah. there are very few people that are real. This dude is a real, real person. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and that's what made him good at ev- seen. That's what made him good at yeah. what he did. Mm-hmm. And that's why he remembers things that are important. And that's why, you know. That's why I'm overweight. <laughs> you're actually under for you. I checked on the scale from older Latino. You're 25 pounds under. There's a new scale. There's a new. Uh, you know, I used to go to the doctor. We used to go to the doctor. They had some shit from the 50s, and they'd go. The doctor would go, "How tall are you, sir? Uh, 5'11. And how much? And how much do you weigh? 210. Oh, well, from here, this. Yeah, you, 5'11. You're supposed to weigh 130. What the fuck? Is <laughs> from the fucking when everybody worked at Gimbals, they eh? fucking 19 fucking 20. There's, it doesn't that doesn't that doesn't work. But no, you know, that's. I mean, you would be great to hear, but you know. But also, I didn't know you're trying to start an orphanage in Vietnam, and yeah. and yeah. like that stuff is what remains to the soul. You know, that's in your soul, yeah. and you know that somebody, you know. I was watching this thing on Kennedy and that gun that Jack Ruby used would made it, you know, there's only like three owners and the second owner had it in a purple Crown Royal bag, it said in the article. Oh, there you go. That's the real shit. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) Hey, I bought Jack Ruby's gun. I put it in this purple fucking bag. Nobody touch it. (laughs) It fits in a a Crown Royal bag. And it's just so, it's all the shit that, you know. My grandma had everything in the oven. I said, "What versus David?" I put it in the oven. And, and uh, it was it was a this guy one time came to me and he gave me a green and a blue like that blue and a purple crown royal bag after oh. the show. And like 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 Gil, I was like, "Wait a minute, this is for me." <laughs> 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 but 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 uh, but yeah, and he's a he's good man, good father about the kids yeah. and and all of and all of that and. He's one of the few Latinos that wherever he says he is, he is. Like me, I, I'm not, you know, not even fucking three quarters of the time. I'll say, oh, no, I'm over here. I'm not there. <laughs> but he, he, he's he been married for over 50 years. Yeah. And he is yes, where, he's, he, is where he says he is. She, Pearl's she, awesome. She, she's doing okay. She was... She was at home right now while I was on the phone doing this. She's over there. Hey, hey, are you on the phone right now? Yes, I got a new book. Yes, yeah. I'm on the phone. Yes. Oh. You know, did, did you? She, She's great, man. She went out the other day to buy. Uh, I had. Uh, I was just. The time that I was off, I was laid up a little bit. I, I hurt my back at home. And so I'm just laying there. She says, you know what? The washer went out. I said, oh, God, just go, just go buy a new one. You know, I, I don't care. You know, we either got to wait for somebody to come pick it up. They're going to tell us it's too expensive. Yeah. yeah. Just go. If you want one, Go find it. So she went out, and she doesn't do stuff like that. I'm the one that goes out and buys the oh. appliance and everything like that. So she goes out, she comes back, and she's all proud. You know, she, hey, I bought this. This is how much it costs. And I said, good for you, dear. I said, hey, that's good. That's a good price. And then she's calling She's calling me up right now. She says, hey, you know what? I found out why it was such a good price. They forgot to put the pedestal on there. They didn't charge me for the pedestal. We need to get no. the pedestal on there. We need to... And I said, okay, dear. Go ahead. You know, I, I was in a hurry when I left. I left. <laughs> I got my I got my driver's <laughs> license and, and my ID. That's about it. I left I no money. No. That's no. the secret is to ask you before you have to walk out the door if you could buy something. Okay, yeah. I'm taking notes. No, um, no I think. Uh, <laughs> well, first of all, you know, when we used to buy shit, it never fit. Like you know, the size of the refrigerator in my grandma's house was a size of not a big refrigerator. But you know, my grandmother went to go buy the refrigerator and it had you could make you could get ice and water. And my grandma, grandma, grandma it, it, that's not going to fit. Como que es not going to fit that refrigerator? And I said, well, there's, there's, there's different sizes of refrigerator. I said, what the fuck? Mira, cabrón. You, I, you, you tell me if that's not the size. It's not going to fit. Well, I already bought it, so we'll, we'll make it fit. You can't make it fit because it isn't in the counter. <laughs> we go in there, it doesn't fit. So it's in the patio with a cord from the oh. garage through the window out to the patio. <laughs> and I'm like, so what, what are we going to do with this size? Uh, this whole this this place with a fr- like um, you could do your homework in there. The fucking place where the refrigerator was. 
<laughs> uh, you can do your homework in there. You can sit there quietly. I it's like the, fucking. It, it, I can see the court now. Oh, it, 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 oh through the thing out under with a, and still with the screen lifted up and other, you know nobody's gonna get in. You know, so so why are you looking at your watch? Are we are we behind? Oh no, me. Oh no, I get uh, I get alerts from our uh, podcast engineer. You know what? I stopped I stopped wearing a watch in here, to your show because I I found myself looking at my watch and you, and one time you said. We're gonna be done in a bit, and and it, I just at a hap, it it's one of those eye, eye watches. So you, uh, yeah, that, keep, that's, that's what I got too. That's how I got the message. Do you keep time at all? Oh, hundred hours, or are you are you back with oh, the, yeah. the regular civilization? I'm I'm back with the civilization. Unless, unless, right unless, unless I'm talking to the guys, unless I'm talking to the guys, I still do military <laughs> time. I already know. you'll know. I already know. know. I already know. I already yeah. know. Although Wait, no so one thing that you actually cannon. talked about, which I think is so awesome, you know, speaking about Pearl, and one thing that you didn't millennials... You about him being on the thing. We got that is art. Oh, Mina! That's an yeah. NFT for, awesome. oh my God, oh my yes, God. Hi. That's an totally NFT true. right there. That's an Could NFT, be? Mina. That is, that is totally... My Looking. grandson, I said, hey, 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 come here, come here, come here, come here. This is a guy that was gone nuts over the fact that I had, that I was on here with Be Real. Oh, yeah, 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 I love yeah. it. He people, and he's uh, he just turned 22, and I said, look at... You think you're bad? Look at this shit. I don't need I a six pack. I got a I got a barrel right here, brother. But that's my picture. Oh. Yeah. And, and he couldn't believe it. He, he was that's excited. Badass, huh? It is. That's it is. That is. I love well, it. Looks good. I was gonna ask you about family because that's one thing that we talk about so much as millennials, especially relationships, because dating is like non-existent these days. Uh, for us, um, I love how you have stayed true and loyal and always talk about the power of family with Pearl. So I would love to know, like, what are the words of wisdom that you would give to people? Because your job, man, she's a full-on classy chingona. Find, find, somebody, find somebody like Pearl, because she's okay, the one Pearl, that's kept Okay, Pearl, we need it, you she, to make clones. She's the, one, she's the one that has kept it together, not me. Trust me, she's the glue that's kept everything together. She's had to tolerate my shortcomings and everything else that has gone on with the job, without the job, and everything that I've done. And had it not been for her and her desire to keep everything together, we wouldn't be together. She's the glue. So you got to oh, find somebody like her. It's pretty amazing. It is. It, it's amazing. Yeah. Because not only that, he wasn't resistant to wanting to have her in his life. Like, I, I think when he came back from Vietnam, mm -hmm. you wanted to get her mm -hmm. back and then dump her. I wanted to dump her. So that, of course, <laughs> because you want to. Such a Latino. You want me to. I want to be a If I can survive Vietnam, I could survive Pearl. I'm going to bring her into my life and then I'm going to get and her a love. She was your Pearl Harbor. Sus. Yeah, she was like, <laughs> get I, I, I want to dump her like yesterday's garbage. I, and that way she you could know. feel what he felt. It's old school. And it didn't last. She won. <laughs> I got two out of I got, I got two out of three. Hey, yeah. Yeah. I got yeah, two yeah. out of three. So, but she, her family too. Like she was okay, the family. Like because she had an open heart. Her dad loved me. Her mom hated me. Oh, oh my god. Her That's mother hated me. I, and I can say it now. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her mom. Yeah. You ask anybody in her family, including my wife. Show they my her mother hated me. I before I went to Vietnam, I went down her mom and dad's house, and we were in love, and you know, and I'm sitting there. I'm only 18 years old, mm -hmm. and I, I went to her mom and dad. I wanted to have a meeting with them, and I said, hey, look, when I get out of the service, I'm just asking your permission. I'd like to get married to your daughter, because that's the way, I guess it was in the old days. You asked for permission. So as soon as I said that, her mother got up and walked out of the house. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> You're like, she's like, just no. going to get the ring. She's, yeah, so, she's very excited about this. So she walked out. My wife, my girlfriend then started crying and said, see, Dad, this is why we don't get along. And that, 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 that. So he went next door neighbor. The next door neighbor was my wife's cousin who had been raised like a sister because oh. her mother passed away and my mother-in-law raised her. So they went over there and then he comes back and he says, okay, I talked to my wife. I want you to come back tomorrow. You say everything you have to say on your mind. If she gets up and walks out on you again tomorrow, don't wait till you come back from Vietnam. Take my daughter to Vegas. Go get married. Wow. Wow. And I said, that's not what I want. You know, that, that isn't what I really want. So she came back the next day and we talked. And mm. she said, well, we just don't get along when she's with you. Yeah. And she gave me all the reasons. I said, look at it this way. I'm going to Vietnam. Maybe I'll get killed. You won't have to worry about it. Oh, my it. God. You said that? Yeah. Wow. And I said, maybe, maybe I'll die and it'll all, it's just another world. She started crying. She says, well, that's not what I want for you. But still, it's not. I said, okay, well, we've got so much time. Why don't we just wait? And so that's what we did. Then my wife, Gabrona, she went ahead and sent me the Dear John. <laughs> oh! She sent me the Dear John when I, I, was, in when I was in Vietnam. Oh. And so it broke my 
corazón. Oh, my God. Oh, I, can't oh, I know. I can't my... oh. So she did that. So natural progression, when I get out, okay, cabrona, now I want you back. Yeah. And I want to dump you like you did, did me. It didn't work out. You know, the, the first day I saw her, I went to her cousin's house to visit uh, to visit the cousin because the cousin were fr- we were friends. I went over there knowing that it's close to the house. So, yeah. So I went over it there and some enough. girl, some old friend of ours, let's just say she was a friendly young lady. Right. Oh my. And so we she called up over there to the cousin. She says, "Hey, why don't you come down to the house and you know say hi just for old times?" And I said, "Sounds good That's to me." That's how they I, trap you. I don't even know where you live. She says. Well, Pearl will be going over right now. She, she, she'll show you how. She'll give you the address. Well, here comes Pearl walking in the house pretty soon. And I said, hey, I just got done <laughs> talking to so-and-so. And, you know, she said, you give me the address, I'll be right back. She went back. She came back. She, got, she opened the door. She got in my car and said, okay, let's go. And wow. she scooted wow. on over. And I said, Whoa. wait a minute. What did you tell your mother? I mean, her mother just right there and wow. I yeah. said what did you tell your mother she said I told my mom I was going out on a date with you Oh. so that's what started it and by September I had her eaten out of my hand I got out in June by September I had her eaten out of my uh, or of my so hand. you think so yeah. you think yeah. Pearl yeah. lets you think and, you won and, and, and so I, I've told my I've told my parents my, my mom especially remember I'm the consentido yeah my mom didn't like her I was gonna say <laughs> yeah <laughs> Latina mom she <laughs> dumped her her mijo Made him suffer, and then my mom saw her at a wedding with the other dude. Oh, oh no! So oh, she's no. over here having a good time. My son's over there oh, in war. Oh man! So my mom really did. So I went up to my mom and I said, "Okay, let me tell you something right now, mom. That's going to be my wife." Oh. Tell my sisters, just so everybody knows, don't be talking smack. You know, that's that's going to be my wife. And December day after Christmas, we got married. Wow! So. What year? Hey, hey, see now with all these. <laughs> what day was it? Hey, it was, it was, I know he probably hey, knows. December twenty sixth, the day after Christmas. It was a. It, 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 was, it was a Friday. A, yeah, it was, it that's was a just, beautiful <laughs> day to get married to. By yeah, the way, the so, day after Christmas. And and I got married, and I told my wife recently. You know, you stopped to realize all these years as a homicide cop. If I'd have whacked you then, I'd already been out of joint. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I'm a free man. man right now. But you know. He, he did everything, you know. Mm-hmm. He did you did everything, but you came back. By the which is even more when yeah. you realize what, how dangerous that was for on the minute by minute basis in Vietnam. That well, and how people were not welcoming. I unfortunately lost an uncle there, and then I know for my uncle that did come back, he didn't come back the same. And I remember just being really little and always having to be told like you can't go into that room. Um, we have my aunt would have to go in and flick on the lights and do this whole thing because of the PTSD and you have to wait for him to come out and I'd be like I don't understand and they're like you'll understand when you're older but you know there was all these special precautions and it pains me to this day when I just see how poorly our vets were treated then and sometimes even now which is why I do so much to help the vets as well well I I, I thank you on that when I came back it was tough you know yeah. and you never talked about Vietnam because we were all these baby Spat killers and, and they, all these yeah, they looked yeah. down upon so they finally got over that you know Thank and God. when we came back from uh, operation desert storm they had mm-hmm. a parade in hollywood and my wife prior to then had gone down on the block of my house with my kids and tied a yellow ribbon around every tree oh and so i said when they come back well wow. i'm gonna be there waving a the flag treat them like they didn't treat us you know let's go over there so we went we over them. there we watched them and then here comes a group of uh, guys in the parade and these were older guys you look at them and it was a group of Vietnam veterans that were crying their hearts out. Mm. And people were standing, giving them an ovation as they went down amongst all these young troops who were coming back because they were finally getting recognition. And then the paper said the next day, you know, he, any Vietnam veteran was welcome to jump in there and be in the. And my wife said, Oh, you could have gone. I said, No, I didn't need it. They needed it. Yeah. I didn't. I'm okay. I'm, I, I've got it all together. Today in law enforcement, 38 years I spent, and, and I loved it. I wouldn't trade it. It was a great job. It was very rewarding for me. Nobody had as much fun as I did on the job, <sighs> and yet I feel the same way I did when I came back in Vietnam. I can't talk about it because for right now, police work, law enforcement is not a popular subject, and, right. and some guys have screwed up. They've messed up. They've made it bad. You make it bad for one. You make it bad for many. For everybody, yeah. And so it's, it's a tough road to hoe right now. So I was in the Reno airport January 17th. 
Oh, look at me, that George dropping facts. Oh, también. And I saw a war, World War II veteran. Oh, God bless him. Yes. And he was by himself. And I walked up and I introduced uh -huh. myself. And I he was waiting it. for his wife. Shut the camera. And I took them and I bought them uh, dinner and lunch and God bless breakfast you. for the next day. That's amazing. And I Gosh, thanked him for his service and, and I went over there and uh, I said, can I take say? a picture? He was, oh, he was happy. Oh, World awesome. War II. Wow. And I saw the hat and I said, wait a minute, I got to go. I said, hey, man. You didn't just get that on Amazon, right? Like you're like actual no. event, yeah. right? <laughs> I and I almost gave him that fucking watch, but it didn't cost that much. <laughs> 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 I said, I'm going to give him this watch. And I said, no, maybe, if, you know. If, 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 did you go to Korea too? No, okay, uh. they were right. No, <laughs> but I mean, you know, um, yeah, they are under, ah, man, that was that place right there in Haskell in the valley, somewhere mm -hmm. down the valley. And then in, in uh, uh, off the 405 mm -hmm. that you know that we don't look after them. Teachers either. Anybody that, you know, Defends this country, and even Latinos and veterans were getting deported. So I was like yep. in the deathless thing. I said, "Hey man, if you can die for this country, you can live in this country." Mm -hmm. yep. Exactly. Uh, and then Netflix cut that out. No, they didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but I mean, it's all of that that makes you know our stories important. Mm -hmm. And then we always have to hear from from somebody else that doesn't look like us. And I think one of the things about that's great about having Gil on, on the podcast is I don't have any depth at all. So I thought it was a depth right here. like two little, two little containers. One like this and then one you, know, I, you put all, so put all the information in there. But, but I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's great. How do we get them on Clubhouse? Now, now we transition, we can yeah. start a room. How, oh, how yes, we, get, we have to get your account you, set up. Give us your phone. You know, yeah, we have now, to get are that. Are you familiar with Clubhouse? No. I know we got into it a little bit. Maybe Clubhouse some, some is... Uh, yeah. No, I don't know. It's run by the Spearman Rhino. No, Ain't yes. I meet at the Spearman Oxnard. Rhino. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so Clubhouse <laughs> is an audio social app, and it's awesome. It started last March. I actually joined last August, and I'm the, as I mentioned before, I'm the founder of the Latinx Town Hall on there. But what's really cool is you can connect with people from around the world. You don't have to worry about looking cute or whatever because it's just your voice. And I think that, and George, I would love to hear your opinion, but I think what I have found to be really cool about it is – as Latinos, we come with the bullshit meter, right? Like we can tell when people are trying to bullshit already. I'm sure you even more as a detective, right? But what's awesome is people might be able to fake it sometimes when you know they're talking or they're gonna act and what have you. There's something about when it's just the voice mm -hmm. that you can't fake it. That energy really carries through. And so very quickly you've been able to see people that have presence there and that people wanna come and listen to versus those that you're like, ah, you're being a clout chaser. That's another word. So a clout chaser is someone that's just chasing the fame but doesn't really have substance. They just wanna be famous, not for anything, but just to be famous. Right, and so we'll be users, if you will, or seam climbers. I believe is a word they used to use back in the day. Um, and so, what? I never heard seam climber. No. Yeah. So I, what I like what about was, it what is, people, I never heard back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Like, did you have anybody? I mean, because look at you, Gil. Like, you were Mamonas. the youngest. Yeah. But pues yo creo que sí. But like, you were the youngest Latino, right? When you were um, in the force to get the ranks that you did. Like, did you have people? that were, you know, doing it for show. They would, you know, get those brownie points. I guess brown noser, maybe. No, would have been you know, there, star there, there might be another. I mean, that's, that's, good. that's, that's like another that. one. There's brown nosers <laughs> and everything, but we didn't, uh, on the job, for the most part, we didn't see color. You know, there, everybody was a cop. Nobody had any, because I was Mexican, I was the first Latino above the rank of sergeant to go to Homicide Bureau. Right. But that wasn't a long-term goal. I just realized, hey, there's never been anybody up here. You know, there's half to have been somebody but, smarter than but me. Also, but also in business, in police work, in whatever, I'm sure people have been victims of this, where somebody would tell you their idea mm -hmm. and then they take it and get credit for it and then they forget that they heard it from somebody mm -hmm. and then they're like, hey, man, that was my idea. No, it wasn't. I, I talked to you about it. Like, they can convince themselves that... That wasn't the per they took this. I mean, idea doesn't that happen in comedy all uh, the time? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Like on the daily. <laughs> people <laughs> steal your jokes. All over. Yeah. Well, it's not it's not people steal the jokes. It's like you know, nobody really wants to do the work, so they they're looking for their cloud chasers, and then when something doesn't go their way, now you're back to the place where you got to do your work. I mean, I've been out to Portland, Tacoma. You were just in Nashville? Salt Lake and Nashville in this last month. It's Damn. hard for me. I'm 60. 
And I'm trying to see if I lo- if I love it as much as I think I do. If if, if what I want to say is important enough to continue to maybe do one more special because you know I fucking want to enjoy my life too. But that's not that's not easy. And you're not phoning it in. I'm working so. I missed the show last Tuesday because I didn't feel good or traveling and I didn't sleep well during the, in, during the day when I should have. And I said, hey, I'm not going to, I told these guys, I'm not going to do the show, man. I don't feel well enough, you know. And then the next I did two and two, and you come back and you're tired. You're, I'm 60. So there's not another George Lopez that, that you can just pass the Patonio and Dodgers, the guy wears the n- number 15. You're like, oh, wow, the same number. That's the same dude. Mm-hmm. There's, there's not that voice out there. And, and unfortunately, there's not anybody really to carry the mantle I don't think is in comedy so yeah I'll be I'll be the man that's right I'll be the mantle go so so you know so so all of that but it, it's never easy to do the work and I think that's one of the things you say and in the clubhouse that we did for the yeah. nfts you can see and I mean you can hear people's emotions when they talk about what either the first show meant to them or whether what I meant to them or the things that I said meant to them and first of all, it's good for me because I don't have to think that I'm like the Lone Ranger, but it's good for them because they get to hear my voice say, thank you, I appreciate that, incredible, congratulations, where they wouldn't have access to somebody, but also mental health. Every, every issue in the world is covered on Clubhouse, and you don't have to participate. You can listen. And if you want to participate at some point, you can, but you can get books of knowledge simply by, by listening. And I think that's, if there's anything great about this, it's not about how fat your ass is, not about what you're wearing, it's not about how you dance, it's about how you sound and your your vulnerability, your real ability, and your ability or your profession and your advice that people would be able to smell bullshit a mile away. Literally. But also in Georgia, and you can talk about this too, what I thought was awesome is we had so many people that even stayed up in Europe. It was 3 a.m., yeah. 4 a.m., 5 a.m., um, you know, that speak Spanish specifically, that wanted to be there, to wanted to hear, and not only even listen to you, but also share with each other of like, I remember, you know, this, watching this show or, um, you know, the kidney mm-hmm. story that we mm-hmm. heard about how mm-hmm. someone was able to find a kidney because of the foundation, uh, which Cha Cha Lucha, they were really most uh, lured to, right? Mm-hmm. So you hear these experiences from people and I always say it's the one investment that we can't get back is time so when someone chooses to spend time like those who are listening to the podcast today and if you haven't subscribed you should and if you haven't left a review what are you waiting for you should right you're so good you're so good yes like it's not something that you said she's impressive it's (laughs) it's something that you don't get back and so to to, refreshing oh thank you but to her (laughs) (laughs) but to see people do that (laughs) and to choose to be there you know we were only going to be on for an hour uh, thank you so much again, George. He ended up extended. We were there like two and a half hours, but people were like hanging on for bated breath. We had over 16,000 people come through and they just were so excited to be united. And I think through the pandemic, that sense of connection and being able to have human touch, even though you weren't physically there, but could hear someone really got through to people and it actually helped them carry these last couple of months and I think that that's why that app really has popped and now we're seeing it jump on on others like Facebook is doing their version Spotify is doing theirs Twitter is doing theirs but the community that's built on Clubhouse is I think what separates it it's, from others it's really in listening to you talk you talk about two things that are extremely important and number one you can tell when somebody's blowing smoke or listening okay two gate greatest functions two most important functions of a decent homicide cop is the ability to understand why people are doing what they're doing, why they did what they did. Mm. So when people are talking, you have to understand where they're coming from or why they, you don't have to condone it. Mm-hmm. You just have to understand it. And number two, the second most important thing is the ability to listen, not to yourself, but listen to what others are saying and take it all in before you have a response, make it a decent response. So the, the art of listening, that's the toughest one to conquer for most people, you know, because their egos, their spontaneity, mm-hmm. they want to, yeah, well, I know this, and you're already thinking of a response. No, you have to have that ability to listen. So it's intrigued me just to hear what you guys have said so far. Yeah, and I think something that you said that it's important and as an actor, I find myself, and even as a host, like, you know, really being conscious and checking in, and I, I find it that it becomes so useful on Clubhouse because, to your point, we can see when someone isn't there to listen or to contribute that they just want to, like, amplify or glorify themselves because they'll jump in to cut someone off, and I'm like, it, 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 
If right. I'm moderating a room, I'm like, excuse me, hold on. No, we have one mic. We One person is still speaking. Like, there's a queue. And luckily, we didn't have too much of that. But you can notice it versus someone that genuinely, which is what I really commit myself to doing. If I'm going to be present, I want to be fully present so that I can hear what you have to say. Not hear with, oh, here's what I'm going to say to respond, but to hear and actually let it impact me and mm-hmm. then go from there, right? And sure. I think when you have that, you have these transformations. And we've seen that happen. So, so we're going to open a room right she, now. Has yeah. she ever started running for president? Uh, uh, I, I think she that. should. <laughs> okay, so you have to put in your number so that I can send you an invite. I reserved your name. But don't, but don't say it on the No, yeah, the just type no. it in. <laughs> because I'm going to call you at 3 o'clock in the morning like the Night Stalker. I think you jump out of your bed. <laughs> no, we're not trying to scare Pearl, okay? <laughs> I just called. I hit send. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Y luego ahorita te voy a mandar el invite, and then um, you'll have it. So, Is it... Is it no. uh, was being a detective something that you could turn off even though you you retired? Like no, no, no. Because I think you know, you know what they say, uh, and not not this doesn't apply to you, but you know how they say sometimes like the uh, baseball managers, a lot of the guys that weren't very good make great. Like they go, used to say, hey, those that can't teach, which is a horrible fucking proverb, wherever the fuck that <laughs> yeah. came from, but but when a lot of the managers that were successful weren't very good as players because they watched everything, but they knew moves and they could see they're watching the whole game. Not as a, yeah. a guy that was, you know, playing. He's only worried about his position, where to throw the ball. But I would find it interesting. Well, not interesting. I know for a fact that even though you're retired, that when you see something that your mind doesn't go to it. Oh, it does. The juices yeah. start to flow. I yeah. really got excited over this, uh, the Golden State Killer. Yeah, you know that. Right, right, right. That that's a heavy case. That's good. Right. And I'm telling a, a friend of mine who used to be a profiler with the FBI back in Quantico, Virginia. And I'm saying, Bill, God, I wish I, I want to work the case and I want to get on it because there's so much there. And he says that's just because it's never left you. You know, you're st- it's still right. you still have it. You got it. You can teach it. You can digest. You can do anything you want. It's still in you. So I still, when I see cases. But what did you see that, what did you see? But, uh, because that guy was dormant, right? So th- so there's not certainly DNA, and then DNA comes and... The whole case was the the ability, the art, hopefully, well, certainly you had the scientific side of it when they made the DNA, but then the ability would be the challenge is get him to talk. Right. That's, that's the, you know, study everything, know the ins and outs. And then get him to talk without upsetting them, without doing that, without him saying the magic words. I want an attorney, right away. And then you know when they caught him, he went in. There, all of a sudden, you're know, the guys at home cooking chicken, and he's like, "Hey, I got to turn my oven off." And then when he gets to court, I, I believe he's playing like he's not well. Yeah, he's in a wheelchair. Yeah, he's in a wheelchair. So, you know, he he was in the wheelchair so that he. I don't know what, what kind of sympathy you think you're going to derive from that, but. He, you know, he never spoke. He never talked. He never, even Sister Mary Clarence, La Perla, even she <laughs> said, "Oh, look at him now." Yeah, 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 cabron. That's awesome. Even uh, oh, sure. even even she said like, "Yeah, this no dude's way. fucking dragging his feet, right?" Oh That's, yeah, it's, man, it's, it's been, you over. see it all the time. You see it with like the Cosby defense and the Weinstein defense, and it's like as soon as, oh, as soon as you're okay. showing up somewhere that, in public, that, or they're like, "Oh, look." That at That was this major poor man. controversy. You say Cosby, <laughs> and I and I listen to Liza say, "Oh, don't even say it." <laughs> major controversy in my house, you know, because my wife says, "Oh, he's guilty. He's dirty. He did all this shit. Now he's getting out free." Now I said, "Wait a minute, dear." You know that people, you're, you're th- feeling with your heart. Wait a minute, I got a message from Bill Cosby. Hang on, <laughs> <laughs> hang on now. Uh, people I'm don't on. understand that you're listening with your heart. Even he, <laughs> even he agreed with you. Hang on, honey, you don't understand that the people are thinking. They're listening with their heart. They don't, know. I'm, they don't I'm, know a deal was already made. <laughs> <laughs> Who made? Why did they make that deal? I'm not in support. You know, I, I met him. Okay. I know him. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not in of, I'm not in support of anything either way. I'm in support of the law. The law. That's all it is. It's the law. The law says mm. if you make a deal, this guy was a deputy. He was with the district attorney's office. He made a deal. Hey, you go ahead and make this statement. Go ahead and go on a record wow. saying it, and we won't use it against you. So it won't and, be brought and, up and in court. And why do they want that? Yeah, why do they want that? 
I don't know if they wanted to solve other, other cases or just go ahead and clear them up because I don't know what was in his mind or what they were thinking at the time that they did it. The bottom line was, whether it was right or was wrong, they did it. It's done. So now a district attorney, so now let's say this happened in East L.A. And now all of a sudden he gets, he gets in trouble in Pacoima. So the DA over there that handles that said, hey, we're going to use this shit against you. And they did it. They used it against them. And the state Supreme Court over there said, hey, wait a minute, a deal's a deal. You said no, you wouldn't. Just because you're in a different district doesn't mean you can. So this deal, therefore, everything that came after that, that's fruit of the poison tree, you can't use it. So it's thrown out, and it throws out any future cases because he talks about some of the other ladies in there. That can't be used against him. So... I'm not saying he's innocent. I'm not saying he's guilty. I don't care. The law is the law. And my, my wife, she's a Latina. Me importa madre. I don't care. Right. You know, he, he, he's dirty. So I, well, take that to the grave with you, dear. So, people, so people have that, like women, of course, are, sure. are up in arms. And the, but, but a deal is a deal. The law is the yeah. law. And why did he do the three years if he had a deal? Because he was on appeal. Right. He was on appeal. They convicted him. But it took okay. the appeals process to get up to the Supreme Court and say, hey, wait a minute. You can't use it. We're vacating the entire, entire case. Thing. That's the problem. If you have one boo-boo, everything gets thrown out. And if we talk about the appeal process, even if we go back to your case, right, with the Night Stalker, he actually was technically supposed to go to the gas chamber. But by the time he would have gone through the long, lengthy California oh, appeals right. process, okay. he wouldn't have even been, no. it would have been 70 before he would have gone in yeah, there, no you know? And in. so, but that was like on paper, right? Yeah. I remember we studied this in, in law school. And so they were like, oh, he was going to go to that. And I'm like, yeah, by the time that he was going to be done, he would be out having children you know like it just wasn't going to happen and to your point when you can play the law to your side it can win and so i agree with you that the law is the law but i also think that the law isn't always right you know i don't know if the law is always right yeah. i don't make the laws all i exactly. do is uphold them exactly so it what it is what it is if i made a mistake like that against a murder suspect i had i don't care how heinous he right. was if i'd have done that with richard right my bad. My right? Mistake. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, that's and, and the that's, part. And that's the law. Yeah, Was if you guys right? would have took him in there and go, listen, man, just, you know, tell us what happened, and you won't be prosecuted. Right. Uh, and just tell us who, you know, one or two or All 15 five, or whatever. whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, this is what happened. You can use it potentially to, you know, capture other guys like me. Right. But this is what happened. Yeah. And even today I heard that. When somebody, when you give somebody a lie detector test, you're almost telling them, "I don't have anything on you." Oh, yeah, it's just a tool. That's yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get them to break. They don't know what they're doing. There. But it's not a good because you're just kind of telling them, "I don't have anything." That's your bluff. Yeah. I don't have anything on you. But well, you now don't all tell the them that. What you're doing? Hey, if you take this test, I can get my supervisors off my ass. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they're forcing. We just want to get rid of you. I want to get rid of you. I don't believe you did it. Yeah. But I just want to get rid of you. We're Let's try to that. clear your name. That, that that's the, the approach. So his made. account has officially been set up. So he's following you. So definitely. And what is he? Uh, real. Um, it's his name. Just his name. I put. Kept it simple. Oh, oh. Mira, get fancy. Yeah. And Richard, in, in in Richard's case, Richard at first said, "I want an attorney." He said, "Okay, all bets are off." So we get up, we start walking out, and he said, "Wait a minute, what's going to happen next?" Well, hey, wait a minute. You don't want to talk to us. You want an attorney. Oh. Well, I have questions. Well, okay, if you have questions, go ahead. Now, knowing he's already asked for an attorney, mm -hmm. yeah. anything he says, can it will be used against him. Yep. But since he's asked for an attorney, we can't use it unless he would have taken the stand, then we could use it in rebuttal. Oh, right. We can't right. use it in the case in chief. Right. I'm not going to mention his name, but I think the judge sitting on the bench that day was Peter Smith. <laughs> and, and he said no names though no names he says it was the biggest violation of Miranda that he had ever seen and here's his year sitting on the bench and I would love to have the ability to tell him today your bench was an outhouse because that's you know I know that that's basic criminal law yeah. we didn't use any of his information in the case in chief right. but if he'd have taken a stand then, you could have, then yeah. we could have slammed him with it 
and right. didn't. Not one piece of evidence out of all the time we talked to them did we ever use. Now, speaking about evidence that you didn't use, and I, I want to go there just because it just it's very personal to me as well as like the fact that you chose to keep the kids out of it, right? I always think of the six-year-old who, with her coloring book and hearing you tell the story, and it resonates um, because I went through something very similar at that age. And uh, I always think like, wow, it's so great that like you though thought of, because the law doesn't always think of the kids and with everybody on the team of being like, all right, I think we have enough on the adult side that we don't necessarily have to get into what mm-hmm. happened with the children, right? But is there ever, was there ever anything there that was left unsettled or unresolved um, for closure that the family still wanted more? Or? No, no. The family was pretty much satisfied with our decision because we were going with 14 counts of murder against them. Great. And what more could we give them? With, and was it worth putting families together? We, we didn't need it. And no need to put them through the trauma, so we didn't. Uh, probably, I believe, one of the best decisions we mm-hmm. made on the case. And and Deputy DA Phil Halpin, it was his his decision. He said, what do you think? We we concurred with him. Uh, we were so happy, and, uh, and I'm so glad that uh, the little six-year-old and I are very dear friends today. I was wow. going to ask, do you still talk to her? So I never I never talked to her uh, once it happened. Yeah. When I retired, uh, one of the local stations, uh, Channel 2, did a four-and-a-half-minute piece on me on a lieutenant retiring. They, they, it was unheard of, you know, but they yeah. did it. And I was going camping, meeting my family, and on the way over there I got a phone call that some lady wanted to talk to me. And I talked to her, and it was her mother. And uh, it was a very emotional call. Yeah, you're going to get me crying again. And I said, I, I I, never wanted to talk about any of the kids. I never wanted to follow up on them because I have a soft spot in my heart for kids, and I didn't want my mm-hmm. heart to be broken because they had gone, you know, psychological problems in the end. And she says, oh, no, it's just the opposite. Every time you'd come on TV, because I used to do stand-ups for my murder scenes, Every time he came on TV, everybody would run to the TV. It was almost like Uncle Gil's on TV. You're part of the family. I can't thank you enough the way you treated my daughter. And I said, I was afraid to ask. And she says, oh, no, she's married, had a set of twins, both her and her husband, a physical therapist, uh, down the area they live in. And it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, thing. And we just wanted to say thank you. So that was it. When they did the documentary, I told them right up front, I will not help you get in touch with any of the surviving yeah, family sure. members. for sure. Uh, so... I can't do that. Well, they then called me up and they said, we we reached out to her, we found her, and she would like to talk to you. And so I called her Oh my her God, up. I have goosebumps. It was. Oh. That's me for the fifth time this podcast. Yeah. It, it was emotional. Uh, she said, she was now, I think, like 41, 42 years old. She says, I've been wanting to talk to you for years, but I didn't know what to say. I was a six-year-old kid the last time I saw you. And you know, things are different. What do I say? What do you say? And, mm-hmm. and uh, so we both ended up with lumps in our throat by the time we finished that conversation. And I, I told her, I said, don't do this documentary because you think it's good for me or for television or yeah. anything else. You think about you. You know, it's your decision. So they called me back a while later and they said, uh, she's agreed to do it if you'll show up on set. And so we showed up on set. I showed up on set. And there was hugs and there were tears. And we maintain our friendship. Man. Her only flaw in life is she's a San Diego Padres fan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. You're so funny. No well, next perfect. time you speak to a fellow Sir Thriver, tell her that this Sir Thriver sees her, believes her, and appreciates her. Oh, thank you. Is that what, they, is that what people say? Thank you for that. Uh, uh, I just, as a Sir Thriver, just it meant so I don't just call it being a survivor because I think we thrive. And you know, we thrive. And out of, the, out, of the result, out of the result of this, when you say you're a survivor. Sir Thriver, Sir Thriver. Uh, Sir Thriver. I, I got... I was contacted by a girl that said, thank me for not uh, giving up on the kids Yeah. Uh, because I was molested at age six and went through age 12. And when I finally told my family, they didn't believe me and they said I was full of the demon. I was lying. Mm-hmm. And she told me the story and I contacted my people over at Netflix and I said, hey, we got this. I just got this, you know, we gotta do something. We can't just leave her out there like this. Yeah. You know? They said, you're riding the horse, you run with it, whatever she needs, we'll support you. Oh, I love and that. And so I got back in touch with her. She had already been through psychiatric treatment, psychological mm-hmm. counseling. She had gone to college. She was now working as a teacher 
at uh, and counseling for inmates that are about to be released from the Texas State Penal System. Wow. Uh, and she was doing good, had six children, was married, and her molester was her uncle, Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. Oh, shit. I had a feeling you were going to go there. Yeah, that, that's, that's where it was, and family didn't believe him. And her dad, who was still alive, Richard's brother, watched the program with her that night. And he finally apologized to her, said, I now understand, you know, it's been wrong. And, and so there's a lot more to the family dynamics yeah. uh, than I, I want to talk about there. But she did, she's a brilliant lady, so such a good lady. Oh, Gil, that just warms my heart. It's so funny you said that this morning. I, there's a show actually on Clubhouse, which we can get on in a bit, um, that they did. It was TED. You know, they do the TED Talks. And so it's their first show that they did, and it was called, it was all about holding gratitude. Like, what's a big moment and a little moment you want to hold gratitude for? And so the little moment was I wanted to appreciate and thank everyone that actually came through for George's drop on Friday to show up. And my big moment, funny enough that you just said that, was, so as I mentioned, I'm a survivor. I uh, was sexually molested by uh, four different family members, including one of my uncles, um, every day from the time that I was six to the time that I was eight. And so watching watching this case and watching everything that you did and what have you really meant a lot to me because, um, and what I gave thanks for this morning was that my mom believed me. Uh, when I, I wasn't able to talk about that then, I, you know, really listen to my molesters and, you know, as you know, they Romeo you and they play mind games with you and they threaten me that they would hurt my abuelita if I said something and they would hurt my mom and my parents had just gotten divorced and uh, unfortunately my stepmother also tried killing me during this time when I was six oh. and um, yeah, so pretty heavy. Yeah. We can yeah. drink some more here. No, no. Um, so yeah, so she unfortunately tried killing me because I reminded her of the fact that there was a relationship with um, someone other than her prior to my dad and her getting together. And I remember acting very instinctively, taking what I could. Um, she tried poisoning me um, and having that with me and having it in my pocket. Long story short, uh, I came with the evidence, if you will, my little legal mind. I'm with my mom once my dad had taken me home because I would not stay at their place anymore. And they ended up going to court. My dad did lose custody. Unfortunately, my dad did stay married um, to her. So that was like a whole thing for me that I had to get over. So go from there to then being molested by these different family members. I really just was at a point where in life, I didn't understand and I thought, if everyone that's supposed to be family and be close to me is trying to hurt me, I don't even know why I'm here. And it's really sad, like I can honestly say, I was six years old the first time I thought of taking my life and not understanding, not knowing who I could talk to because I was scared that if I said something to my mom or my grandmother that they would hurt them, right? And so I was taking the world on on my shoulders. And while I wasn't able to speak about the molestation part, I did obviously come forward with what had happened with my stepmother trying to kill me. And my mom believed me and took action and they went to court and what have you. And so what wow. I gave gratitude for this morning, I said, when a kid comes to you and tells you something, believe them because you don't even know what it means for them to have to even come to you right. mm -hmm. to say this happened and go from there because it really can destroy people's lives. I've seen friends of mine whose parents didn't believe them mm -hmm. versus really unite and help others thrive, which I'm so blessed because, you know, I did the therapy, I, I did the journey and I'm very blessed to be here uh, and alive and, and happy. But when I see another sort of thriver, that's why it's important for me so, to always acknowledge so that. So do we say that, do we say that Partially, the reason they don't want to believe it is what it'll do to their dynamic. Correct. Right there. Yeah, like correct. Yeah. Yep. correct. They don't want to blow everything. They don't up. want to accept correct. it. We don't want to blow yeah. everything up. Right. Yep. So no, no. What did you do? What were you wearing? Where? Yep. Where? How you did you ask it up? for it? Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. To the strong lady that she is, Rosie Wattis. Rosie told me the story, and all she wanted was she wanted to get her story out. She didn't mm. need any help. So we did the uh, Tamara Hall show, and or Tamara Hall, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Tamara, yeah. <laughs> so we went on her show, and they, they did it, and they taped it. But just before the ending of the taping, my internet connection, everybody in the city went no. out. Yeah, the, the, the internet went out for the whole, the whole city where I live. And so I didn't get to hear the end of it. So the people from Netflix called me up and said, okay, we listened to the end of it. Things sounded like they went well. You just missed a little portion. They said goodbye. Everything will be good. We saw you. You were great. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I called up Rosie, and I said, Rosie, how did it go? I didn't hear the end of it. And Rosie was pissed. Oh. And she said, you know, Gil, we talked about what they were going to talk about to begin with. 
all they really wanted uh, when they asked me was no. the inside story, you know, about my uncle and about this, about that. She says, they didn't ask what they were supposed to ask. And they didn't do this. And so I said, I'll call you right back. So I called back the the people from the Tamara Hall show. Yeah. And I said, hey, this is wrong. This is not, not what okay. you said. I didn't hear it. It's not okay. She's not happy. We got to do something to, to fix this. Yeah. And so they did. They went ahead and they cut out her interview Good. and they redid the whole thing. I'm so happy. So to when that. it came out, and that's all she wanted to do was get the point across listen to your kids. Be heard. Yeah. Just listen to them. And kids, don't be afraid to come forward and yes. tell them. That was her whole message. That's all she wanted out. So, and isn't and it interesting that. that I had the same thing? Exactly. Like, there's a commonality yeah. there. Exactly. It, it doesn't happen, and especially in the Latinx community, like, there's the pena, right? And there's the shame. And so everybody wants to sweep it under the rug. When I did finally come forward to say to my family, I was in college, and um, George knows I was the first in my family to go to college, and I went to school back east, and I remember coming home. And the only reason that I was able to have the strength, if you will, is I had repressed everything. Um, but I used to walk home every day with a rock in my hand because I was so scared. And I had told George this. In my household, Richard w Ramirez was the cuckoo, right? And so my mom would always tell me, and this is after, long after he already had been caught, but she's like, you have to make sure you come home. Like, you never know. There could be another Night Stalker. Like, what's happening? So I would always be walking with the rock in her hand, and she thought it was because of what she was telling me. Little did she know it was because I had survived this experience that I had gone through. But when I then went to school, you know, I was like, okay, I was very prude with my relationships in high school and stuff because I just didn't feel comfortable going somewhere where I had already been violated. But I remember getting to college and there was a Psych 101 class and they did this repressive memory exercise. And in the middle of the hallway, all of a sudden, like, I just remember sitting down and we're doing it. And I'm like, oh, this will be so good. Let's see what comes up. And boom, oh. shakalaka for the win, but not really. <laughs> um, I could remember everything. I could smell um, my Whoa. uncle's, like, the beer that he would drink. I could feel his hands. Everything came to life. It was like the floodgates had opened. I didn't even make it to the door. I started vomiting. And I was, oh. like, shaking. I'm like, oh, my God. And I called my mom. And again, in an instant, she was at work and I called her and I was like, hey, I need to talk to you like right now. And she's like, okay, okay. And I told her, and again, to her credit, believed me and I was supposed to go to spring break the next week. She's like, we're canceling that. You need to fly home. We're gonna get through this. And so we did. Little by little, I ended up finding out and I'm sure Rosie found out too. When it happens to one, it happens to many. So I found out that it had happened to more of my cousins as well. And when I came forward, the family, to your point, George, discredited us. Uh, my aunt spit on me. She called me a bitch. And she wow. told me, she's like, so that's what you went to a big fancy school for, is to learn how to, like, destroy a family? Oh, like, what? why didn't you just oh, keep God. it to yourself? Like, why would you have to bring she it up? And I'm like, because you have kids, and you can stop it. If he did it to me, I know that he's your brother, but this is one of the four. Mm -hmm. He's probably doing it to your kids. And when they get older, they're going to hold you accountable for not stopping it. No, no, I don't know what you're talking about. He would never do it you're making things up statute of limitations had already passed so again the law not always on our side sure enough what happens my cousin gets older she also came forward and her and her daughter now don't speak because to the exact thing that i said she didn't believe her when she came forward and she's like oh liza must be telling you to say something she's like what do you mean i was four like i light is that didn't tell me anything we don't even talk to them anymore well god bless you liza for coming no forward no but that, thank you stuff. just one, one, one little thing you said the kukui. That's what they used to call me out on the streets when I was working. Really? Yeah. yeah, I was the kukui. That's what they used to hear. Because if you're a criminal, they don't want to see you. No, yeah, right? I, I, I was the kukui. They, that's what they called me. My partner was Green Eyes, and I was the kukui. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> what was your nickname, George? Uh, let's see. And where do we start? <laughs> Rockhead. <laughs> uh, oh, but my grandfather called me uh, Encanto, which oh, was a term of endearment. But I didn't take it as a term of endearment because... I, I didn't know what a term of endearment was. was. I thought it was. I thought <laughs> yeah. he was fucking with there, 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 There's no way this is a good thing. There must be a secret. It's way. the best thing. Yeah. Like, you know, so Momo, you know, Momo and this guy AJ Barrera, they're a little bit into the. They, you know, they're intuitives, and uh, Momo was at my house. There's no way that Momo knows this, and he says, "I uh, feels." He goes, "What is uh, who, who called you Encanto?" And I said, uh, "I said, hey man, why did you say that? Why, why?" Why did you say that? No, no, like something just came to me and said like, 
So my grandfather called me that, and nobody, See, nobody that's knows the, that. That's the difference that's between the me and you. Somebody said that in my house. and said, ya vete, cabrón, get out of here. <laughs> I'm telling you. But, you know, I named my first company that, and, you know, Encanto? There's, a, there's an Encanto. There's a, there's I'm like, is there an Encanto Cha Cha? I think. No, there's not. That's Ooh, that's, that's going to be a special one. one. Yeah. Super premium mm. right there. Yeah, that, you know, I can draw too, so. Mm. But, I mean, this is, uh, hey, isn't she great? She is. Oh, this is uh, this is the nicest, courageous, and and, 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 uh, and there's so much and intelligence, intelligence. So much that is so much power has come out of mm-hmm. her. Very profound stuff. I'm. Uh, what I would want mine to think I could say that because mine doesn't listen. But what I would aspire mine to be. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We'll, we'll clip this out. But we're going to be best friends on the show. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So. NBC, if you're watching, we uh, are starting to already cast. <laughs> Unbeknownst. Man, I know how to do it. I could do it. If I've done it once, I can do it again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's when you meet somebody that you know is it is amazing. And I think for Clubhouse, like I told somebody, I, I told you guys that the first time I did it, I was talking. I didn't know I was talking about colonoscopies. And, you know. <laughs> There, I was like, well, you know, you got to, I mean, you're, once you turn 40, you got to, every five years, you got to go. And then somebody sent me a message, hey, man, everybody can hear you. And I said, well, they're hearing now me they say, know. you, you got to, you know, to get colonoscopies. But it, it, it's, uh, I didn't realize how, I think it's better for us than Instagram and Twitter. Because it is me telling you what my truth is mm-hmm. or what good advice is when... On Instagram and Twitter, it isn't about good advice. If it was about or TikTok, it was about good chasing. advice. The cloud chasing. Mm-hmm. The cloud chasing. The cloud you're chasing. <laughs> chasing you know, the cloud. You know, somebody talked me into going on Instagram, and and the criticism is new to you, right? Well, the criticism doesn't bother me because I was going to say you should be used to that. <laughs> yes, if, if, yeah. if you don't, if you don't acknowledge criticism, I, I like what you said. The little message that I sent you today. If you don't acknowledge what somebody says, then you're it the winner, exist. not not them. Yep. Because right. they're trying to get a reaction out of you. Yep. So that's, so that's been my whole thing. What somebody do they call that? Uh, what's the word for that? Like right. somebody criticized, criticized, Christ, they say, hey, man, fuck off. And then they got, what do they call yeah, that? Yeah, well, they want they want to get yeah. that, the is poking. Is there a word for, that? Is a word for No, poking? but it, my, my, it's the poking, right? Trolling something. It's trolling, trolling is a good one. Yeah, I feel like trolling. My mom used to always compare it. So I'm sure you all played tetherball growing up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so my mom was like the tetherball champ of the yard. And her biggest thing, because she used to tell me that when I was little, because, you know, being a light-skinned Latina, I would always be teased for being a coconut. And people would say that I was brown on the outside. You, had, you had to be above it? Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. If they couldn't reach it? Yeah. yeah. No, so what she would say is, so they would call me a coconut because they would say I was brown on the outside and white on the inside, which I just thought was ridiculous because I wanted to study and not oh, get into gangs great, It's a great stuff. term, by the way. And, <laughs> yeah. Mm, thanks. Thanks, maybe, George. Maybe George is my new brulee. Amazing. <laughs> um, so she would be like, but here's the thing. Here's what you do. She's like, this was always my trick. When people would, you know, throw the ball, I would get it and I would figure out where I was going to aim, to your point, aim higher. But but I would hold the ball. If I didn't want to play and if I was done playing and I just wanted to take the win, I would drop the ball and walk away. So when someone throws something at you and they love either hate or their insecurity or their issues, hold the ball. If you throw the ball back, you're giving them the attention exactly. and you're going to play the game. Exactly. If you don't play the game, the game is over. You win. You walk away. I'm like, hey, all right. Yeah, that's well, that is like, don't, way don't more bit. complicated than what I said to Gil. I said... Uh, we don't respond to that shit because zero <laughs> people know who that is, and we're above it. I'm not. I'm not gonna most likely have a Latino who's a social influencer, right? Uh, be with us and influence people. So there you go. And there's a beef, yeah. uh, beef squasher uh, <laughs> beef reference. And so, squasher. And you know we don't. Yeah, we, we don't. So this Instagram stuff. Uh, I've got a bunch of followers, and it's. There's some very nice people on there. But there's also now probably a good, minimally 100, 200 people that are Richard Ramirez fans. Oh. oh boy. Groupies. Oh, yeah. Do you get groupies? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I got groupies on there, and I just keep deleting them. You know, I just keep. I, I How does answer. Pearl deal with the groupies? Pearl doesn't follow Instagram. <laughs> okay. She she doesn't, good but thing over she the doesn't, years, though, she doesn't, been that? she doesn't know. Does yeah, she doesn't know. Because if, if, the, if the killers get the groupies, I still don't understand how Richard got married, which is just weird to me. But if the killers get groupies, I might think, like, you as a detective could get some groupies, because I know you get groupies. Yeah. So I can only imagine. I mean, did that ever impact your marriage or relationship with Anne? 
Well, no, they're not groupies like that. You know, listen, when, when they're Latinas, I had more people that wanted to feed me than fuck me, can I say? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they would bring... <laughs> I would bring food to the house, <laughs> and they would bring cakes, and I would throw them in the trash. But it was like <laughs> she's like, "You're gonna poison listen, me." Listen, you can fuck him, but if you feed him, he'll come back to you. <laughs> but if he fucks you, he—that's the last time you're gonna You'll see never him. hear from him again. I remember Arsenio said to to somebody that I was hanging out with. They said, "Hey, listen, if you ever want George to leave you alone, just tell him you love him. He'll take off." <laughs> so so uh, uh, I was like. The food was the way because you know the food is, to me, when your mean, heart. much more Hello. pleasurable the than heart, than, yeah. than my you know inconsistent. That goes for the life. I don't know if I'll go that far to, to no, join no, you no, on but that. I <laughs> but I just say me because more it's uh, the sat. I don't know. I just think the flavor, the way that I saw <laughs> of relationships. I don't appreciate a good relationship. Mm. That's fair. It yeah. wasn't modeled. It's almost like if you're, yeah. if you're drunk and you grab somebody that's beautiful's ankle, they're like, hey, motherfucker, let go of me. I'm, fucking, I'm not going down there with you. And they're like, I'll fall by myself. So, you know, it's careful who you... I was always careful about yeah. who I associate. would associate yeah. with, yeah. whether for the good or for where the better for them, because I was going to probably tell them it's not a good idea mm -hmm. because I'm not going to be there entirely because I'm going to disappear at some point. But at least I understand it and I haven't been able to, you know... Get it. And groupies, me. I've never had groupies like that. <laughs> like that, oh good. Yeah, I've never had no groupie. I mean, look, they take a look. 71-year-old man, overweight, retired. What are they, who's, you never know. I'm just telling you. It's not that. There's like a, a thing. Like, why would someone be, you know, attracted to wanting to get with Charles Manson, with Richard? Oh, yeah, Richard. You they they want to have his babies. Yes, the Menendez they, brothers. They, they like, wish they could have his babies. You love know, a project. I mean, right? immediate, I mean, immediately you said when they, when they, Captured him and you guys took him from Hollenbeck down to down to what kind of jail? Oh, you guys yeah. take him? That the woman opened her. Oh yeah. She what? Go, hey, she was going. Oh, yeah. Wait, hey, is that the look. story of what the perp walk was? I want to know the perp walk story from when you took him out of Hollenbeck because we, we took him out of Hollenbeck. Went straight to card. We had cops all around us. It was like presidential a thousand motorcade. people in the street too. You know, they had oh. people back. They had helicopters over us. Motors in front of us. Motor Crazy. behind us. Cop cars and as we're driving down the street away from Hollenbeck, some lady. It, it was like a Mako truck, like a panel truck where they sell tools out of yeah. she's on top of the pam truck she opens up and she's swinging and i said there no. you are rich those are for you brother you know they're not for me <laughs> they're for you so the, the people wow. were all kind of stuff and, and he was what did he say he didn't say nothing <laughs> he didn't mm -hmm. say nothing he just well you know he said that once he got captured like all the kind of emotion leaves right because their yeah. power is being ch and being chased. Yeah. Like they they watch they watch the news. They read the paper. They're looking for their name. Well, I don't know how he didn't know that he was in every paper when he came back from the bus. Well, it went it went, went out bus. Friday. He was on a bus traveling to back from Arizona. Brother. Yeah. Or he, who he didn't see. Right? No, no, he his didn't brother see didn't see him right now. No, his brother didn't see him. So we put it out Friday night here. Okay. He's on a bus coming back from Arizona. He gets back Saturday morning. And then that's when it. he sees his picture. So fun fact, my uncle was a block away, also lived in Islos, uh, was a block away from where he got captured. Ella fue de Metiche. To sure. like also make sure that he got in. And he was like, honestly, if the cops hadn't showed up, they would have killed him right there. He's like, they were not going to let him go. They, they, they were going to let him go, but those were the nice people that got him. And I they said, oh gosh. Um, he's like, the closer it got to nightfall, the more we were like, if oh. it had been, If it had been the people from the barrio, you know, the, for sure, for the sure. banger, they'd have killed yeah. him just because he was messing around okay. in the barrio. Is but, that pole still there? Oh yeah. Where's the car? <laughs> Anybody have the head wrap and that Jack Daniels shirt? I, any of yeah. those things? Th the Jack Daniels shirt that could be an NFT. That is a big deal. People ask me so many times. Where is the shirt? Where is the, the shirt? Evidence? The Jack Daniels shirt. The biggest question is, so where's, where is Jack Dan and they, where's the Jack where Daniels shirt? And the shoes. And did he smell like a goat? You know, we, oh, yeah, did he? Said no. The people no. need to know. Okay, but where is the shirt, though? Why, why are you I have no, out? I have no would idea. Would he still in evidence? Or yeah. you would have taken, I, no, he never got out. It wouldn't be in evidence. We took... Everything that he had, it was placed in evidence. Right. Whatever we Is used for the court process uh -huh. was submitted. So they would have possession of everything that was submitted for court Ooh. as court evidence. So it's lost somewhere. Yeah, now. and, and no, no. we would have anything that was not submitted. Right. So what they will do eventually, somebody because I don't work there anymore. Uh, there is no more appeals process. There is right. no more civil process. There's no more nothing. Somebody's going to sit there and say, let's just get rid of it. Let's destroy it. Do you know that there's a 
evidence locker at the courthouse? I don't know. There's an evidence locker in the courthouse mm-hmm. that is evidence from as far back as, I don't want to say any names, the 60s, 70s, 80s, all there. Gun, ropes, evidence, uh, tagged. Do they let the, you see it? In this closet, and it's closed to the public. Only if you're VIP, George Lopez, you can no, see No, I probably couldn't get it. Uh, mm-hmm. It's like when they make you go in the naked. You know, they used to do pills so like in New Jack City you know you couldn't steal you walk in there naked so they make sure you don't leave wearing a Jack Daniels shirt hey, wearing the Viva I, shoes I was wearing this when I came in but there's an evidence locker in there that is from the from the past so it's probably in there because it wouldn't be thrown away I don't, I don't believe well some of the stuff you know like I was just asked within the last five five months they had a chair the chair that Richard sat in every day in court oh said do you want it Asking me, the courts are asking me, do I want the chair? Did you take Did it? You tell them that George wants it. No, no. I said no. You know, I told. I the said, hey, energy, huh? they're, they're asking me if I want the chair. My wife said, "Mierda, you're bringing yeah. that thing <laughs> yeah, out." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With that energy, firewood, so, maybe. Well, we Him did. Praising Satan. I, no, I made arrangements you. to get it over to the sheriff's museum. Oh, that's smart. So, that's so they'll right. keep it there. But they're, that was stuff just held by the court. That's not in evidence because that was not part of the case. That's just where he sat. But Gil, okay, so here's the thing. I'm on a mission. I want to get George into the Smithsonian, definitely with an NFT. But I also feel like if there's other evidence, I feel like we also need to put you in the Latin um, Smithsonian in D.C. Yeah. Because you were the first Latino, I know you're super humble about it. But I feel like we should either get the chair or get something else, figure that it out with like your picture there. We need to submit it to the Latino Smithsonian. Dude, just I, I'm appreciate it. I'll tell you my the socks that I wore in high school still fit, so that everything else is good. You, okay, uh, nobody knows this. I went to see Bill Cosby at the Tulare State Fair in the late 90s, and he did the show with a chair that, there wasn't a chair, and they said, well, what do you need? He said, I need, you know, like a little place to put my cigar, and I need a chair. And they went to the office, and they got a metal chair with green vinyl back and a green vinyl seat. And I took the chair, and I still have it. Ooh. You don't want to throw it out after the whole. I haven't Indian even thought about it until right now. Oh. Statute of limitations up. Don't matter. Yeah. It's yours. Wait a minute. Did you have? How did you walk out with the chair? Were you just like pretending you were a maintenance man? Like no, I was. You know, I can be. I was kind of in. You know, but maybe even. Let's see. You're like me. Wait a minute. Give it back. All right. So. How was this, Graham? Beautiful, huh? This <laughs> is great. Are you still yeah. looking at your watch, Governor? No, no. Like I said, that was just the command to uh, get Gil a little over the left so he could get his beautiful face in the frame. That was all. I love it. Wait, so Gil, tell me, did he really say when they gave him his conviction that death is nothing and he was going to go to, or I'll see you at Disneyland? Yeah. He said that as he was walking out of the courthouse into on. his transportation. But he wasn't... Uh, was he an intellectual? No, he was. He was just kind of more of a. He, he was well read, read. like like like. Okay, you know, like they just kind of like would just pick at you pick to at say you, something yeah. to you. That, the guy was, you know, people ask that, and and he was. It was a mutual respect. Uh, I was a homicide cop. He was a murder suspect, and we respected each other. He was good at his craft, and I was good at my craft. Thank and, God you were better. And so yeah, and, and I told him, hey, the guys in white watching movies, guys with white hats always win. You know, you guys don't. So we're going to do this, Rich. And he called me Gil. I called him Rich. And that's well, the way we got along. Wow. He was not He was well read. And, and and he says, I've got an eagle that will fill this room. He said, I'll tell you everything from the time the Romans fed the Christians to the lions to modern day serial killers. So he was an articulate individual. So he is, was there super- a, is there a statement that like you ever think of or that like haunts you that you're like, gosh, I really wonder what he meant by that. Or like, why didn't I catch that sooner? Because that was maybe a clue or a giveaway that he... No. I love that. Not at all. But Hail Satan. That Hail Satan <laughs> thing. Still, Still chills and with people. And with the hand. With the, the hand. hand. Oh, no. That was too much. And then writing it on the... What was the big... What was the he, big... He, he uh, did, did the it on the floor. He did it on the floor. He did it on, on the, 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 the desk. desk. He was doing this. And when I called him on it, I said, fill it in. And he didn't... He said, what? I said, fill it in. He said, well, a pentagram. I said, that shit doesn't bother me, Rich. And he just erased it. There was nothing there, but he erased it. But Fucking mind, like, a, like mind Playing games. Playing those games, Playing yeah. mind games. Everything's a, everything's a fucking mind game. It was. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, 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 we, had to, we were playing each other. Yeah. It was a game of chess. 
What was the clue? The, the jewelry that he took, that, that guy to San Francisco, where the, the that informer guy... And the shoes. Wouldn't give the name. Well, we, we the got... The shoe. Everything came together at the same but time. But then the shoes got thrown away somewhere. Over I didn't Golden, know that... The, over the Golden Gate Bridge. Rich threw him over the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, the I Golden, didn't know because, that. Because uh, Diane Feinstein... Oh, yeah. Can we talk about her? Because was the, I was bitter grapes. That, like, she's was the, the mayor one that, and like, said... They said, don't tell her not to say it. Yes. Don't say it. And she did. She said it. Yeah. And he heard, of course he heard. I don't know what the reason was, maybe to up one up LA? I can only imagine, you must have been so livid. Fuming, fuming. Oh, because that, even even when the reporters went over there and the guy was watering the grass, he goes, oh, is this about that dude that writes on the walls? Exactly. That too. Oh. And that guy, was that guy work for the police department? No. Where the guy's watering the grass and he sees them mm-hmm. there and they go, what are they doing there? Oh, and it's on Laurel Erickson and that guy. Yeah, Henry Alfaro and Laurel Erickson. Paul oh, Skolnick was there. Paul Skolnick. And they go, oh, they're probably there at that house because of the guy that writes on the walls. And then when they came out, they said, what about the guy that writes? They go, you know, you could just see their demeanor change. We're out. We're good. Yeah. Nature. Oh, dale, nature, nature, dale. Yeah, thank you, you guys. Your, your you have your setup. You have and then to we come back. Do yeah, no, and thank you. And w- wasn't she great? She was oh, you're so sweet. Fabulous. And good stuff. Simply fabulous. Everything good. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Covered a lot of... Uh, good time. Had, this was very, like, tech-forward episode, so people, people will... I think it's good Tech to and be... emotion, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and emotion. So it, was, it, was, it was tech go and ahead. insanely go. deep emotion. Yeah. Go, go, I don't, you know, yeah. What are the accidents like you? If you got a bounce, you got a bounce. Well, yeah. I still got my... Oh, and I want to thank Tyler. Um, good seeing you, brother. I think it's Talofi. No, it's not. What's his name? Say it right. Uh-huh. Talofi? How do you say it? That's gave you the goods? Yeah. Toffoli. Tafoli. Tafoli, not Tafoli. Tafo- what did I say? Talofi? Talofi, yeah. Uh, what, why did you say it? You got close. Tafoli. Tafoli. Go ahead, I never go. said it right. My man was a king, won the championship with the king, went to Canada and played, I think, with Winnipeg, maybe, and then got traded to the Canadiens, went to the finals and did not win, but he went to the finals. And he gifted me this Let's see this the back. jersey. Because... Oh, beautiful. Mira. I got a king's one side and sign it. But that's all right. And you know, check this out. In my heart of hearts, when I was growing up, I didn't really I watched hockey a little bit, but I always liked this jersey. It's amazing that they would send it to me because yeah. It would have been one I would have bought for myself. Well, don't tell them that now. Yeah. Don't tell them that now. Boom shakalaka <laughs> for the win. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's Manifest great. Yeah. Destiny. There another one. God, with this manifest destiny. <laughs> Keeps working up. Orale, I love it. We're done. 